And boom, there it is. Episode 33 of Joystick Maverick brought to you, as always, by Tough Wraps. If you want your supplements, you want your gear, you want everything to make you feel and look better, go to toughwraps.com and use Joystick at checkout to get 10% off. Stay tough. I wanted, Stay to get, tough. I wanted to get that out of the way this week. Just, just, just hot out the gate. Let's go. Get a sponsor. Thank you very much again, as always, to Tough Wraps for that sponsorship. We are forever grateful. Here we are, episode 33. We're just a couple of weeks away from our one-year anniversary episode on March 25th. And Dom, welcome to the show. We're doing the show naked. Yeah, baby. <laughs> from here down. Just it's, yeah. The funny thing is, we're both going to look like we're still wearing sweaters. Yeah, that's just, perfect. Just, just wool carpeted sweaters i'm gonna braid mine i don't have a hairy chest like you do i know Bro, you do what? yeah I'm, i yeah i have to, sh- I have I have to no shave hair. a separation between my mm-hmm. beard and my chest hair yeah it's a it's a it's a gift and a curse you know i just i go to the beach and people are like are you okay ma'am and they're like oh that's my husband and then you know they kind of like are you sure it looks like a giant dog or uh, professor lupin from harry potter but Enough self-deprecation for one episode. <laughs> Let's move right along. Uh, hey, man, I know we're it's Friday, right? We're, we're taking up a, some people's favorite day of the week. Some people thank God for yeah. it, in fact. But yesterday was awesome. And Shit. we know why it was awesome. It was so good. I can't wait to talk about that at the end of the show. Dude. So, but, so before we even get into the, the, the nitty-gritty of, of our final round, which is obviously, hopefully to everybody else, very obvious, uh, it's the Batman. Just came out yesterday, or came out today officially. Uh, it was released for fans on the 1st of March. We saw it yesterday, the early showings, which are now just kind of like a fuzzy showings. Like, there's no, like, official midnight release now. It's like, pfft, they're like, we can make a bunch more money during COVID time, so we just open it a day early. Um, mm-hmm. My theater sat about 100 people. Maybe there was 20. I mean, maybe. I had an entire row left and right to myself. And yet somehow, and this is my one pet peeve with theaters, somehow a very tall person sat in front of me and a very tall person sat behind me. So I got a little bit of bumps from the back and I got my knees smashed in the front. And I was like, of all people in the whole row, and then I go, well, you know what? They probably bought the tickets for their whole group because they sat in the center just like me. Whatever. Whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have the opportunity sitting there wearing a mask for three hours. But damn, this is it your worth first it. movie theater movie in a long time, isn't it? it? It's my first it's my first big release. So I went to – my last one was uh, No Way Home, and that was kind of the same That's thing. Right. And people yeah. behind me were crying you know, when I was crying, which is great. I love, I love a group cry. It's very therapeutic. Uh, Me too. Except for when you hear the person, the group behind you being like, how is it Saturday the second time? And I'm like, oh, so you've already seen this and it's still sad? Okay, can't wait to buy it at home and cry whenever I feel like. So that's great. So my theater experience, so my theater was pretty full. I think the thing is, is that the, the movie like kind of like had like, it's like premiere night on Wednesday. Mm. Um, like a bunch of theaters showed it on Wednesday. I had no idea. Um, my theater was was pretty full. See the theater that I go to. So, in where I live, there isn't like a major theater chain. I love that I episode thirty three. You're learning. Don't even don't I even say where you live. Where I live, almost doxed myself. <laughs> um, where I live, there aren't major movie theater chain like a, a movie theater chain like right by my house. There's like a a, a local smaller one. But we, for like large releases, we go to a, an AMC, which is about 35 minutes away. Right. Um, which they have like the Dolby theater. So it's like reclining seats. And even if they're people sitting next to you, they're not that close to you. You're not right. like sitting on top of each other. And if you have people in front of you, there's not really a bad seat in the house. Plus like the um, sound quality there, obviously it would just, just rattle your teeth together. Like rumbling, yeah. Yeah. Um, theater was really quiet. Uh, there were a few like, jokesters in the in the theater that were like Ooh. like talking a lot during the trailers and i was like don't make me get up and smack this shit out of you for ruining my batman experience uh, like like if you're getting hyped about the movie that's one thing but if you're just gonna start like popping off at the mouth like it it, it wasn't it wouldn't have flown not after the week that i have had professionally it not it would not have flown <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you the entire time i'm sitting there during the trailers same thing same thing yeah and it was like, like mm, it, it, sure. it it was non-exclusive to like, 
you know, age groups at all. Like, it was all ages and sizes. It was just like, okay, please tell me that you are such a fan of everything you're seeing that you respect it and you want to tell the person you're with so much about it that their brain hurts. But when it comes to go time, you're going to shut the hell up. And it's exactly what shut happened. Shut the fuck up. Because... And there was a dude next to me who was on his phone like a whole oh, bunch. No. And I was like... And I was like... Bro, just don't fucking come to the theater. Just, like, just, just don't come. Like, if you're going to act like that, just don't come. I'm going to dump wait a whole till, soda on you. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. It, th thankfully, uh, it sounds like, it sounds like, for me at least, there was not that many, like, people that violated my personal rules. And again, I think COVID has really changed my brain, right? COVID, I'm at yeah. home, I'm watching on my big screen TV. I, got, I just got well, whatever popcorn and Sour Patch Kids and Cherry Cokes at all I want same food that I want at the same time is silence and it's golden. Now I have a child. I'm kind of used to like the ambiance of like murmuring or whatever, but eh, if I'm going to a movie theater, I and did I'm risking say, it, everybody better I shut did the fuck think up. after watching this movie yesterday, I would have benefited from this movie a lot better if I watched it at home. And I love the movie. Like we'll get into it. But You're like, an advocate for the reverse. Yeah. I was like, so, like, Marvel movies have always been go to the theater, experience that. Yep, yep. This movie, I was like, I think I would have preferred to watch it at home. Yeah. Because I think that what I would want to do would be, like, rewind shit and, like, pause yes. it for a moment. Yes. And all that stuff. I can't, so, I can't I wait to get so. into the, the gritty details. Yeah, we'll get like, into there, that. Because there was so much. If, you, if you're a slow reader, you're fucked, right? And we'll get there. Yeah. But. <laughs> but I but I digress. Uh, no offense to anybody who reads at my speed and has to hear it internally, but at least this episode is not going to be that terrible until the end. So we're going to at least give you something good and some valuable up front, and then we'll ruin your day. Uh, this week in the state of gaming, bit heavy hitters because we we let a little bit go off yeah. last week, right? Like we we were like, okay, look, the big thing is all these games came out, and we've had about sixteen minutes to even like smell the cases right or or even just download them and have the load screen come up first up is horizon forbidden west a sequel in its own right a massive sequel though i mean even the I got reviews, a really funny thing about this oh please like really funny real quick right start it up on top go for it you, take over please so my partner and i we were we were at we were at the movies last night and a, tra a trailer for this game came up and she was like this looks awesome do you have this and I'm like, no. <laughs> and she's like, are you going to play this? And I'm like, I would love to. Have it not been for 14 other games that have come out in the last three months that I'm just completely backlogged in right yeah. now. That we're still getting it into. Um, but I was like, this looks fucking sweet. Like, I would love to play this. But I nope, don't have that. I, I watched a 30-minute review, and I was just like, holy crap. And I feel like it, even the 30 minutes of just watching different gameplay throughout different events, they did a great job. I think it was IGN. They did a great job of not really blowing, I guess, the climax or storyline, which is really to me what I what I care about when it comes to games like this, like one player games. Yeah. Um, the the mechanics and the effects, all of that looks insane. It looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. Hor the man. first Horizon looked incredible. It was like one of the best looking PlayStation games of all time. Yeah, and I, and I think sequels have a really hard time of like matching their their originator. Right, this looks mm -hmm. pretty freaking good. Uh, and before I forget, yeah. Michael Mahaffey, thank you. For all, as always, man in the chair, show notes, just looking the way you do, existing in this universe, put in the chat that Encanto makes him cry every time. Which is interesting for a white man. Yeah. Like, it's oh, very really? What? For a white man. I think it's very interesting for I a white man. I give it like, Encanto for like Encanto for me like really hits home because of well, the fact that it's yeah. based on a true story of every Latin grandmother is gaslighting their whole family. <laughs> That's, but that's why wrong. you cry though, because oh, no, uh, me, yeah. me, me well, abuela is, is being just so mean, mean, just so mean, mean. <laughs> muy mal, right? But for love, me, I'm just like, love my love I, I, love, I don't like being misunderstood, or I don't feel like I'm special. And then at the same time, I'm also crying because what's her face with you know the super strong chick? She feels like she's yeah, got to fix Louisa? everybody's yeah, well, that Louisa, all like crazy, yeah, she's like, got to fix everybody's I'm, problems. I'm the oldest. Yeah, just, yes, yeah. Yes, I no, felt. That's weak. The thing. I felt like, weak. Kanto, like, <laughs> I said the most unrealistic part of that movie is the end of that movie where the grandmother owns up to her actions and takes. Her oh yeah, that's not happening. That's not happening. Yeah, no, not not a Latin family. If it was a, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't know about the Latin part personally, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to lean in on your experience for that. However, yeah. if it was like a forced ghost at the end, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> the grandma. <laughs> <is dead. laughs> like, oh, I get to live forever and tell you how terrible you are. Right. Let's let me do that right now. Okay. <laughs> he said. He said. Family trauma isn't his, isn't a Hispanic thing. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that you. That is a Hispanic thing. I will completely <laughs> take that from you. You already have everything, like good credit. You can catch cabs. All of that. The like, Latinx white, community has fam- just familial trauma. Just totally owned familial trauma. Yeah, that's. I, you know what? At least he said family and not familia trauma. Like that would have yeah. been on the nose. I would have banned him. <laughs> he <had> said <laughs> Suddenly, the, uh, uh, Mik- Mikhail Mahaffey would have shown up yeah. in, the, in the chat instead of Michael mm-hmm. Mahaffey. Uh, but no, that, that definitely veered from what we were talking about, and I apologize, but I had to make sure the chat was heard. Uh, but Horizon yeah. Forbidden West looks pretty freaking great, and a lot it's of people are saying sweet. it's a contender for Game of the Year, uh, which is which is big britches to which fill. Which is crazy, because three more games we're talking about today Bro. are contender for fucking Game of the Year. Yeah, I, I don't think... <laughs> You want to talk about like just jamming in all your wins up front? I'm I'm kind of like the rest of you is kind of kind of fucked. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, next up, Destiny Two: The Witch Queen. I have zero context. I have zero knowledge. This is I'm sorry. So I'm throwing it knowledge. all on you. I'm gonna try to pepper in banter, but wish yeah. me luck. So I. So Destiny Two. Destiny Two is like the game that I put the most hours in. Like right. if you pull up. Let's look at Steam. I have it pulled up right now. On Steam, I have a uh, playtime of 932 hours and 70 minutes. Oh, my God. That's just Steam. Uh, that you're, doesn't include PlayStation. You're almost one-tenth of the way to perfecting a craft. Yeah. Like, you could have. So you could play the piano pretty well if you put that level of effort mm-hmm. in. So, Destiny 2 Witch Queen. The, delayed from last year. Supposed to come out in uh, around November of last year. Actually, around August, September of last year. Mm. Bungie's new expansion. Right. Um, I won't bore you with the details, but it's but they were, uh, but they were bought the by PlayStation. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the best that it's the best that Destiny Two's ever been. Really, it's literally the best that Destiny Two's ever been. We, yeah. We've been talking the about sequels, kind of like taking it in the shins. You really think it's that much yeah. better? What what, what it sets it apart from the last expansion? Besides, obviously, the storytelling story is out of this world. Um, the gameplay changes that they have made. Um, one of the big things is that they're taking so the. For each character, you have four subclasses now. Mm. Uh, three that are light based, one that is darkness based. And the darkness one is stasis. The light ones are solar, void, and arc. Okay. And what they have said is that in these expansions, um, that when the stasis subclass came out, it was highly customizable. It was really cool. You could do like different fragments and different play styles and different builds and everything, very much like an MMO subclass. The older subclasses, void, solar, and arc, have been around since Destiny 1. All of those have stayed relatively the same. You essentially pick one ability, one ability, one super, all of that. Okay. With Witch Queen, they came out and did Void 3.0. So they redid the entire Void subclass for all three uh, classes um, to make it like the stasis one where you can um, make builds and all of that stuff. Sure. It works perfectly. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it changes the play style of the game. Um, it allows you to really kind of theory craft and build craft and, and all of that. They added weapon crafting into the game. Mm. There are all these mechanics that they added into the raid. The raid world first uh, uh, competition starts tomorrow, and no one has even seen what the raid looks like. I'm super excited to watch. I like will not be partaking. I like when a competition um, doesn't even tell you what's happening. It's like Hunger yeah. Games, right? Like you're just oh shit, and then it goes right. So. The, the game is the best that it's ever been. And I when, when this came out, I was pretty cool on it. I was like, eh, you know, I, I played Destiny for, you know, you know, thousands of hours at this point between one and two. Um, I, I'm probably going to take a, a, a backseat to this. Um, and then, like, I was off for two days last week, and I think I spent, like, 36 hours fucking playing this I game. feel like and I got like, a message I'm from you, like, like already. I totally just hit the storyline in, like, eight hours. I was like, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> like, fucking light cast. How, how many like, pee breaks I have, like, you all have the weapons three? that you need to have. Like, it's insane. It, it, but it's great. The game is, is, is really great. It's in a really cool spot. It looks beautiful. The new environments for um, the, uh, the throne world that you're on for Sabathun is really great. And the storytelling is fucking bonkers. Now, now for um, for Destiny, there's definitely a multiplayer side of this, right? Like, are the oh, same yeah. mechanics? It's almost entirely. Tr- yeah, 
they, they translate over to multiplayer. Like, his, do you it's play multiplayer, or are you more player. like I'm? I'm right now on the the storyline path. So, I play Destiny like I play WoW. Where like, tell me more. I'll find like a core group, and like I will stick with that group for that's what's up the whole time. That's what's up. So like, yeah. you know, I have a I have a few friends that have been playing Destiny for years. Um, you know, I played. Uh, uh, you know, I'll name a few. Uh, Cloud Strife, uh, I think one two seven. I've been playing with him since Destiny One. Uh, Mach T, PJ, all of these guys that I played with for years. At this shout point. out, shout um, out, yeah. A uh, an expansion will bring them back, and like I said, like literally, like today. Um, you know, I, I get done with work and I hop on Destiny, and I just have my like I'm not even playing, like I'm like kind of cleaning up from work, yeah, and all that stuff, and I'm just chatting with these guys on PlayStation Chat. And I was raiding, you know, about an hour ago um, with a group of people that I played Final Fantasy XIV with for a while that I mm-hmm. also played Destiny with. And, like, the community is great. Like, you get a lot of outliers in this community like you do with WoW where everybody's toxic and shit. But, like, for the right. most part, the community is really cool. But you can cultivate um, your own, you know, universe, really. Yeah. But, yeah, I the multiplayer aspect is awesome. And that they, we, they really leaned into it. Like... The, the way that the campaign is built this time is there's two difficulties. There's normal and then there's legendary. And this is the first time that they did a legendary campaign like they did with Halo. And doing the legendary campaign like gives you all these extra benefits. It's not like just make it hard to be hard. Like you get like a whole bunch of extra shit, which is really cool. But do you um, get any different was, like storylines or any extra like level no, to it? No storylines. Hmm. Like the biggest thing is like so the light cap is 1550 for powerful and 1560 for pinnacle. Yeah. And you start at 1350. So you start 200 light below. Got the, it. The, if you do the story on legendary, you get a full set of gear at 1520. So it bumps you up 100 and, you know, 170 light just by doing that. Now, again, um, does that translate over to like multiplayer? Is everybody equal there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like those, that kind of puts you at the end game. It's like getting gear in Warcraft. Yeah. The better gear that you get, the higher equipment that you can exactly. get, the higher, you know, you can do heroic raids, you can do all that shit. It's just like that. That's know? cool. That's cool. Um, so it's cool. I love it. Uh, it. It is awesome. So in your opinion, best in a while or best overall? Best, I would say best overall. This is, this gets compared to the Taken King, which was the second Destiny, third Destiny expansion hmm. um, for Destiny 1. Because it was Dark Below, House of Wolves, Taken King was the third one. And it's not just because um, of the monarchy was, theme there. Like That's not just like an obvious lay person so trying to figure out, like, oh, the, Queen and King. Next is Jester and Joker. Is, so the Taken King and the Witch Queen are brother and sister. They're, I can't get into this. There's a lot. If we want to do like uh, a Destiny lore. Brother and sister, they call those along. prince and princesses? But I feel like King yeah, and well, Queen they, are married. They rule at the same time. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, because that was there's getting, a whole lot there. That was getting yeah, weird. Um, they have compared this to the Taken King being like, the Taken King was essentially the apex of Destiny One. It was like the best that game has ever been. Got it. This is probably better than the Taken King overall, and it, it is. Shit, it's, it's incredible. I love it. Big words from big man. All right, next up, guess what? His WoW group. Okay, so Mike. Oh, Mike right, brings up pause, a great point. Pause. He says his WoW group doesn't include anybody he knows in real life. That is absolutely true because um, all of you people have children um, and don't have schedules like I do to where I can throw myself into a game until three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's our, it's our fault. um, It's our fault. It's all. No. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm a terrible friend when it comes to Warcraft. He's absolutely right. Like I like I'll be like, yeah, dude, I'll run shit with you, and then I'm in like heroic raid, and like I'll get gear, and I'll be like, bye bye. I gotta go raid. Goodbye. I'm gonna go find a- He's absolutely. He is absolutely right. Hey man, I respect it. I think like uh, several weeks in a row, is like, yeah, I'll be online on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Never showed up. It's not just my fault. Just like a text, like the next day, like my bad, bro. My bad. You know, it's not, not like, like you needed a tank. It's, it's not like I just copy and paste this from last week. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well, unfortunately, ragging on your friends is going to an end. Uh, let's go to the next game, Elden Ring, where it's solo play. I, I, I got to tell you. This isn't just solo play. What? This is multiplayer as well. Oh, like campaign modes multiplayer? 
or like so, against each other. Just like Dark Souls, you can summon people to actually oh, like actual other out. players to come in and help you. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. So is it the whole campaign though? Is like, or is it like one off? So like you kind of. I don't a... think there's a campaign. I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. I bought this game, and then I played Witch Queen, and then I had to <laughs> fucking put it down. <laughs> well, I mean, when I say campaign, I mean like there's a, a beginning of this game and there's an end of this game. You think it's just open world the so, whole time? There's constantly bigger beasts. Like, I always feel like Dark Souls and Demon Souls don't really have campaigns. Okay. It's okay. like yeah, like you're right. I think there is a there is an actual end to the game. Right. But I think it's so nonlinear that like you could go straight to the end of the game and right never the see game. like a credit roll either. Right. You're just like there's um, so much more to do. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much talk about accessibility in games and like there should be an easy mode for games, which I'm completely for. Like Mike and I talked about this for hours the other night. Actually today. I think it was today. Mike and I talked for a couple hours. Um, which is uncharacteristic based on our work schedules, but like we, we were able to like kind of connect for an hour today and was like he was he's playing Elden Ring and he fucking loves it. And he's like I was like, dude, yeah. He was like, I just like to be overpowered. Like that's why I keep playing the first area over and over again. It's because I like to like blow through things. Because I don't want my games to be super difficult. Matt Hafford just like, said I in the chat. He, agree with he you. said there's a story. He confirmed there's a story. So hopefully there is a story. Yeah. But no, I, what I what I really mean is like I feel like this game is for me is kind of contender for game of the year. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause. Kind of contender. People are saying this is the greatest fucking game of all time. Yeah. Well, let me let me at least pepper in uh, chats comments here uh there are required bosses to progress the story okay so there is there is kind okay. of like a a progression that um and i say kind of kind of sarcastically because i feel like it's been such a long waiting period for this right on top of that usually when games come out there's always going to be something kind of goofy with it like cyberpunk right there's a bunch of memes about how just jacked up was <laughs> or like any, any really any game there's going to be something that's like it's kind of funky and for the most part, everything I heard about it, which was a lot, not just like in our, our communities online, but like even at work, which is like people being like, dude, I just I just logged on and just got murdered for hours. Like I just every time I thought I was doing something right, I was learning how wrong I was for hours. And then they were like, OK, then I thought maybe just I'm tired. You know, I need to take a break. I went to bed, woke up a little early, you know. Kids and all that, so they get up early. They have renewed, renewed, got coffee. Again, murdered, 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 murdered. And then I look at online to find out, like, are there, you know, memes or, or short little clips of like just something goofy or something like that makes the game seem like seriously super easy. And most of the time, it wasn't. It was like uh, a guy battling a bear. That's the same ratio of yeah. man to bear in real life. And then all of a sudden, there's a bear six times the size of a normal bear. And you've got a half a second to realize that thing's coming at you because of the the, right. the point of view you have. Oh, my God. Like I, I, would, I would hate to constantly be thinking about trees that might come to life or grass monsters or whatever it is. Because that, to me, makes my stress level go up. And that's what I think makes it so hard. And I, I find that the more... The lack of clips I see for the game, that means people are more embarrassed by how often they're getting murdered in different ways that they don't want to Dude. put it online. Until, of course, I'm sure you saw the clip where, like, basically the almost no armored person was just battling. He's just like doing this. <laughs> Fucking. <God>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that to me, I was like, I was like, all right. So it's 99.9% .9 the hardest game ever. But there that, are people that do shit like bit? that with all these games. Like, <laughs> fuck you. Like, fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Like, 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 I don't make games so hard that I can't play them. And then, like, don't oh, gatekeep shit. that shit. Like, people on the internet are fucking terrible. They're like, just get good, pussy. And I'm like, yeah, that's not how just, this works. Just get good. Just be better. It's like, and then I, people are like, you I shouldn't buy a, 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 you shouldn't buy this game because you know it's a Dark Souls game. I was like, how? Okay. When you fucking twats come out and say this is the best game of all time, like what okay, makes, what makes you think you're like, not going to buy it? Super Mario World. Super Mario World is the best game of, of all, all time. time. Yes, 
Yeah, like you're saying that this is the best game of all time. Fuck every other game. This is the best game of all time. Do you expect people that are not part of the Dark Souls and Demon Souls fucking cult to not come in and buy that game and be like, oh, this, yeah, like I want to play the best game of all time? No, oh, fuck you. You can't, like, you can't have it both ways. You can't be some niche fucking community. Yeah. And who would gatekeep this? You know, gatekeep all of your people. Like, fuck y'all. It makes nah, no sense. Absolutely not. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And I, people that do that, I guess, I guess this have never worked on something for five years and then just right. pushed it out into the world. And if you have, great. I mean, kindergartners, right? It's the same way I feel about people who rag on fucking developers. Like, exactly. Who rag on like game developers are like, do you test your game? Yeah, absolutely. Constantly. I'm sure that Constantly. I'm sure that they have QA. Like, there's no studio in the world that doesn't have fucking QA. Have you ever brought a product to launch? <laughs> but at the same time, you're never going to no, get the same, because like... Because I have. You're never you going to get the same, like, bag of dice mentality right. that people have, like, I'm going to click on this button and then this one. For How reasons. How did I know that if you put your dick on the screen that the application would break? <laughs> like, I, uh, like, I don't think about shit like that. I heard a good joke today, and it, you triggered me, so I'm going to say it. Uh, this guy said that his dick was featured, his, excuse me, his dick was in the Guinness World Book of Records. And then the librarian asked him to take it out. I shouldn't have been tricked. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. That's thank good. you. Thank That's you. really thank good. I'm going to use you. that. All right. And then the last one. Uh, what's the difference between a uh, chromosome and a hormone? I've never, I've never heard a chromosome. But I have heard a hormone. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Elden Ring. IGN gave me this game a 10, by the way. Yeah, Masterpiece, by the way, which is a word I'm going to use later for obvious reasons. There was a kindoffunny.com. So kind of funny, Greg Miller, who famously said, fuck Bobby Kotick at the Dice Awards, which I don't think we talked about on the show. Is it kind of funny games or kind of funny? What's the name of the show? Kind of funny? Kind of funny games. There yeah, kind of funny. All right. Um, I don't know if we talked about it on the show. Uh, Greg Miller got yeah. on stage during the Dice Awards. Where he's like, F said, fuck Bobby, Bobby Kotick. And then he, he, he did the letter first, <laughs> like, F him. X and then everybody's like, him. And, and then, then doubled down. Doubled it was down. like, yeah, fuck that guy. He's the worst. The, I just listened to their predictions episode of um, the. They do like a predictions episode every year at the beginning of the year of like shit that's going to happen in gaming. And um, their whole thing. Wait, what? Ma- Ma- have you got it? Our, our algorithms are aligned. Is that from We Got Chocolates? <laughs> yes, it is, Mavi. Our algorithms <laughs> are so in sync. Get out of my brain. Uh, it, and it's only weird that your first name has several of the letters that my wife's first name has. So we're all in sync. Our, our time of the month is the uh, same. It's great. I totally love Oh, they kind of funny. One yes. of their predictions was they were going to give IGN was going to give three games a 10 in 2022. <laughs> were they all these? And I think they've already given two. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what, what do you think the next one would be? Or based on that huh, show, what, what do they say? Or they just didn't say in any, They didn't say specific games, but like ten, the ten, next ten. one, if Breath of the Wild 2 comes out this year, then it's definitely getting a 10. Hmm. That's fair. If That's Breath probably fair. Breath of the Wild 2 does make, does make Street Date this year. It, it'll get a 10. That's I don't probably know what fair. else is coming out this year. Yeah, but it, I feel like I, I hate when people do that. Oh, we're, they're going to give at least three of these. Is that because historically for the past 10 years they've given three, you know, 10 ratings or whatever? Like, they, and that's my inner like sports gambler. What are the, what are the Vegas odds on that? Um, but I digress. It's not, that's not this kind of show. Coming right up and coming soon, guess what, man? I actually got really thrilled about this first, this first trailer. <laughs> like, stupid excited about Bullet Train featuring yeah, right? Brad Pitt. 
Um, fucking nowhere. Dude, yeah. Um, I, obviously, you've seen the trailer uh, with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum and the Lost in the Jungle or whatever, and and Brad Pitt shows up out of nowhere to like save Sandra Bullock. Clearly, it doesn't work out because he's not in the rest of the movie. And she's like, why are you so good looking? He's like, my dad was a weatherman. And I'm like, that's a great <laughs> line. <laughs> you just wasted it in the trailer. <laughs> Why would you vote that? First I saw thing? that trailer for the first time in fucking uh, <laughs> at the movie last night, and I was like, "What is this movie?" And Ashley looks at me and she's like, "Doesn't this movie look fucking terrible, but also hilarious?" I'm at gonna same watch time? it. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm definitely gonna watch it. I think um, for me, I, I like the fact that like for the the past couple of things that I've actually I truly remember Brad Pitt being in. It's been like really serious like pieces like. Uh, what was the movie where he was in Tank War or in a, in a tank? Oh, fuck. Uh, Fury. Thank you very much. Fury. Shot a boost in that movie. A couple other people. Really, really. Oh God. Uh, Punisher is in that movie, right? So that I thought was a good good movie. Obviously, we've got Glorious Bastards, things like that. But kind of sprinkled in recently. It's been Deadpool two as the Invisible Man. <laughs> You've got this now. And then this kind of was like the, another jarring, out of left field, the, yeah. the hell, why, why is he in this? And at, at the very beginning of this trailer, I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then Brad Pitt shows up. I'm like, now it looks more awesome? Like, why am I more excited? But anyway, a train killer, Ladybug, wants to give up the life, but is pulled back in by his handler, Maria Beetle. In order to collect a briefcase on a bullet train heading from Tokyo to Morioka? Morioka? Mallorca. Mallorca? Are you sure? M A. What is it? M O R I O K A. Morioka. That's what I said. You're anyway, right. Once on board, he and the other competing assassins on board can discover that their objectives are all connected. We got Brad Pitt, Joey King. Aaron Taylor Johnson, for those that don't remember Aaron Taylor Johnson, I'm pretty sure that is Quicksilver. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is, he's got three names, right? Uh, Brian Tyree Henry, a.k.a. Crazy from Hunter. The Eternals and Atlanta. Uh, he's many, so many good more. in Atlanta. Paper boy, paper bull, paper, all about my paper boy. boy. Yes, sir. Uh, this, this movie is set to come out the day before my birthday, 2022. My birthday will come up again later. Uh, just saying. So July fifteenth, twenty twenty-two. Can me? we make all of the release dates around your birthday? Can we? My Elden Ring comes out six months before my birthday. <laughs> I I just want to have like I just, oh they're they're all relative. I think they're it's all great. relative to your birthday. I, I'm totally down with like, that. Actually, Doctor Strange in the it's like what day is your birthday? Oh, uh, it's only ninety four days before my birthday, right? Like whatever it is. There you go. <laughs> yeah, see, because <laughs> it, well, it, it's it's. It's funny. I love I love myself. Love my name. Love my birthday. Um, because nobody else does. I'm. I gotta at least try to pick up the slack, right? But um, but I mean July, middle of July. It's like my month, birthday month. Um, I mean, guess who shares my birthday? It's not just me. It's Will Ferrell. So I mean, you can't you can't double lose on it. But this looks great. Uh, I I definitely am. <laughs> I'm curious. Sandra Bullock's also in this. No. She she's the chick on the phone. She's Maria Beetle. Is this just a, a campaign for the other movie? This is this has <laughs> got to be like a, a casting director's wet dream. If Channing Tatum shows up, I'm gonna lose it. I'm suing somebody. Just even if he gets murdered, and like, hey, what's up, bro? Beep. Just <laughs> first scene. Like, I, I want to leave this life. I lost my brother, and it's Channing Tatum. Just gone. <laughs> That'd be wild. Anyway, the trailer was great. Um, I hope. I hope. I hope it's it's. Fantastic. I'm definitely going to watch it regardless. Come, but right next after it, Fantastic Beats 3, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Let's return to the magic, Dom. Let's do it. There's so much magic in this trailer that I'm <laughs> fucking hyped, bro. It's this so, so cool. good. It's so good. It's, I, I honestly, like, I've, only, I've got a favorite character, and I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. I want you to try to guess it. I know you've seen the first two. Guess what? He's in it. Any idea? Kowalski. Yeah, bro. Of course I want that oh, yeah. human to have a wand, man. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Can I keep this? Yes, you can. Uh, this, I've been saying it? since the beginning 
And like, I get that Johnny Depp has gone through some shit. I've been saying since the beginning, since before they yes. even casted this movie. I know where you're going. That Mads Mikkelsen yes, he would be the best Grindelwald the whole time. of all time. The whole time. I've been saying it the whole fucking time. The whole time. time. And now I'm getting my vindication. And now it looks like I'm right because you see him for all of 30 seconds in this trailer and you're like, yeah, I get the charisma. I mean, who would sit across from Dumbledore and say, I'm going to burn this place down with or without you? And you're like, I bet he, I bet he could do it. I bet he could do it. Only that guy. Uh, premise, for those that don't know and have, I don't know, just an aversion for Harry Potter, it's set in the 1930s. The story leads up to the Wizarding World's involvement in World War II and will explore the magical communities in Bhutan, Germany, and China, in, additional, in, in, excuse me, in addition to previously established locations, including the United States and the U.K., with Gellert, Gellert, Gellert? Have I been saying his name weird? Anyway, Grindelwald's power rapidly Gellert growing. Grindelwald. Gellert Grindelwald. His power rapidly growing. Albus Dumbledore entrusts Newt Scamander and his friends with a mission leading to a clash with Grindelwald's army. Dumbledore must also decide how long he will stay on the sidelines in the approaching war. Uh, I'm excited about it for many reasons. Obviously, uh, in the Harry Potter kind of universe, before, it, before any of these, you know, we, we knew that Dumbledore defeats Grindelwald, right? We find out later that they were not just, you know, friends. They were more than friends. They were not just like brothers. They were closer than brothers. They were lovers, man. Get past it. However, when you love somebody, what's, what's better than a prenup? Hey, look, we're both powerful. We're both badass. Let's make a little prenup. Let's make this little blood pack so that we can't fight and hurt each other. That sounds great. So now you can just throw spells at each other and nothing happens. Uh-oh. Guess what? I'm going to turn evil and try to kill all the non-magic people in the world. Uh, non-magic. Didn't see that coming. Whoopsies. Um, well, here we are. Hopefully uh, we'll get a cool way of like disabling this blood pack between the two of them. Um, again, you mentioned uh, Johnny Depp's departure. I think... The only credence to the storyline that kind of works is the fact that Polyjuice Potion seems to just run in the streets. You just open a tap, uh, take some glass, get a little bit of that Polyjuice Potion in your cup, and then turn to somebody else for a little bit because, you know, we had um, Colin Farrell in the first movie, then we had Johnny Depp in the second one, now we've got uh, Mads Mikkelsen. So shouldn't be too hard to make that stretch. I'm just curious if they're going to actually address it and have Johnny Depp's face melt away. In the film. So. Oh, that would be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Otherwise, we're just like going to assume he's a time lord and just regenerate it, and we're not allowed to ask questions. But next up, upload season two. Did you ever watch this? I watched like the. This is the one with Robbie and Mel. Yes, sir. Couldn't get into it. What? I tried it. I what? Get into it. What? Yeah. what? 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 Why not? Why? After she said the same thing, she was like, I love the show. And I'm like, I really didn't. It's so great. He's getting assassinated by future people. And then his rich girlfriend is dumb. And then melts his skull. And he gets uploaded into the internet. It's just, I know it's far-fetched. But once you get past that, we're, we're looking at a digital terrifying prison. Come on. That's the best. In 2023, sorry, 2033, humans are able to upload themselves into a virtual afterlife of their choosing. When computer programmer Nathan dies prematurely, he is uploaded to the very expensive Lakeview, but then finds himself under the thumb of his possessive, still-living girlfriend, Ingrid. As Nathan adjusts to the pros and cons of digital heaven, he bonds with Nora, his living customer service rep. Nora struggles with the pressures of her job, her dying father who does not want to be uploaded, and her growing feelings for Nathan while slowly coming to believe that Nathan was murdered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right away. My favorite thing with movies is like when the audience has a secret with like one character in the show that every other character doesn't know. We're just like waiting. Just look at this. Look at the clip. Look at the clip. He's screaming, don't do this. And then they murder him or whatever. 
And then every character is like, oh, he's just faking it. There's no proof. And we're like, we saw it. There's so many people in this room that saw it. Why didn't you see it? I just I love movies like that. It's my favorite. Uh, but no, it was at least very quickly like comical. And what I love is the fact that like Lakeview, while in in this universe is a very expensive neighborhood, it's truly kind of like flipping the middle finger at like a freemium model where you get all this stuff and you can technically be here for free. But if you want to actually enjoy anything at all, it's going to cost you some paper. And his girlfriend is just the worst human being. She had a funeral for him, brought all his friends, and he's dead. He's literally just a screen. And he gets a, a camera view of what's happening in the real world and gets to see all his friends show up and hit on his girlfriend. Like, and can't do shit about it because, you know, he's dead and he's digital. Right. Like, it's torture. And of course, she's like, "Oh, I just I don't even like Scott or whatever. He just he just is so grabby." And he's like, "What do you mean grabby? You know, like something he could never do again." But I can't wait for the new season coming on March 11th. But again, I'm so happy that we changed this lightning round. I might just start calling it like headlines. I don't want to make slideshows yeah. for, but now it's lightning round yet again. But I'll read it quickly. Marvel's Netflix shows and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are set to drop on Disney Plus on March 16th. Futurama star John DiMaggio joins Hulu's revival saying, I'm back, baby! Love that. You can bite my shiny metal. Uh, and then finally, the most confusing sentence of the day, Evan Rachel Wood will play Madonna in the Weird Al Yankovic biopic starring Daniel Radcliffe. That's someone that has... A lot of names. Evan Rachel Wood. She was in True Blood. Weird Al Yankovic. Daniel Radcliffe. What? Daniel what? Radcliffe looks great as Weird Al Yankovic. Really? He looks great. I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a photo. I mean, he looks great. Here we are on the internet. You can probably put it up. Uh, but I I can't I can't wait to see what happens. This is I'm gonna watch it. Obviously. Weird Al. Yeah, absolutely. Running with Scissors was my favorite like comedic album growing up. Uh, yeah. Had the prequel uh, instead of oh my goodness, American Pie. It was uh, long episode one. That whole basically yeah. just did the entire movie in that song, which is mm -hmm. great. And unfortunately, I could sing a lot of it, and I won't. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> next up is new releases. I have not watched the first episode yet, but I have watched most of the other seasons. Season five is right around where I lost some steam. However, this show for that people can't see on the screen is Peaky Blinders. Season six just dropped. I love the show. This is another show that I really want to get into that I've really tried. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's and a, I love everyone that is in this show. I love everyone that is in this show. And I'm just like, it's a slow I find burn. more joy out of it watching t clips of it on tiktok than i do the whole show i, I mean <laughs> honestly I, I, i'm right there with you i, I honestly I, I have to think that like there's one joke I, or one line i use all the time and it's it's really whenever someone questions what i'm doing or ernie you, why are you going to the store ernie why did you buy that thing why do you why, why did you just buy an ipad mini even when you have an ipad pro because we can because we fucking can. We fucking can. I love the no fighting one. No fight. No, no, no fight. fight. No, no fucking fight. fight. And then like someone bumps him and he just fucking throws him on the ground. <laughs> so there's plenty of things like that in this show, and that's why I keep coming back to it. Um, I'm just gonna quickly sure read the. It. Let me see. I'm not. Whoa. Thank you, Maffy. Man, Maffy. Chef's kiss. The chef's not. These, these show notes this week are fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to read the synopsis for Season 6, or Series 6, if you're from the UK. The sixth series begins the 5th of December, 1933, when Prohibition was repealed in the United States. Makes total sense. The Nazi Party has also obtained power in Germany, leading to a growth in membership of the British Union of Fascists. Okay, so we got newly renewed boozing, plus fascists, and a bunch of Irish people. I can't fucking wait and i did not wear this hat on purpose although i look great next to this you do look great ensemble cast where do i fit 
I feel like I could, I'm I'm closer to the guy in the back there. He's a, he's a definitely an older gentleman, looking a little uh, side eyed, but that's all right. None of these gruff, stronger men up front. But I digress. And by the way, like if you were looking at the cast list here, uh, everybody's in this. I mean, Killian Murphy, Sam Neill, Helen McRory. It, it's the list goes on. I mean, I'm, I'm just scrolling through probably 30 people, 35 people. It's holy shit. It's, it's, it, this to me is like Band of Brothers when it comes to just people that if you, if you know them, you know them. If you didn't know them, give it five years and you'll definitely know them. Next up. Am I losing you? Are you there? No. Okay, good. Uh, next up is Guardians of Justice. Have you seen this trailer or seen anything about this? Not a whole lot. I uh, I saw like a teaser trailer and it was just, like the worst. And I was like, okay, is this going to be one of those like indie sci-fi future things that I'm just going to be like, okay, I'm going to watch it because it just looks goofy. The first episode is like it. Everything about this is, is clear. It's making fun of DC, but not. Like, everything about it. So, the premise is, when their seemingly fearless leader self-destructs, a team of troubled superheroes must confront festering evil in the world and in themselves. That is an underselling for the very first episode where it's it's kind of present day, if you will. Yeah. And But back in, like, right after World War II... World War Three actually kicked off, and like shit just started going terrible. And this alien from outer space shows up, marvelous man, and he basically what? ends war in a day. And he's played by Will Yun Lee, and antics ensue after that. So he he's basically I mean, that sounds interesting, dude. It's awesome. It's awesome just because Will Yun Lee. It's famous in his own right. Uh, you've got Jane Seymour. You've got Tiffany Hines, Derek Mears, Denise Richards. And then his playing Wild his thing. like, yes, yes. <laughs> and then playing his Batman counterpart known as Nighthawk is Diamond Dallas Page. That's what Mike said. DDP, baby. Diamond yeah, Dallas. That's dude. That's a name I haven't heard in a long yeah, time. Yeah, dude. Like this, I, I was like, okay, I saw, I saw DDP and I was like, I'm in. And then I oh, like the very first episode. Long story short, I'm, I'm just okay. The banners is going up for this. The banners going up. In the very first several seconds of this movie or, or this series, basically Superman is so exhausted from just trying to save humanity for forty years that he's like, "You you fuckers just don't get it. I keep trying <laughs> to save you every day." And then when I close my eyes, all I hear is like, you didn't save us. You didn't do enough. And he's just over it. And basically puts a kryptonite bullet in his mouth and just bow, just blows his brains out on live television. Yeah, it's wild. And uh, the president is played by, oh, I can't remember his, the actor's name, from, um, from Stargate, the TV series. Uh, he had a huge symbolness for it. Either way, uh, it's, it's wild, man. And it kicks things off. His girlfriend. I actually uh, like. I really want to watch this, <laughs> dude. It's so. You like really sold me on it. It's it's bonkers. It's I mean this this. Yeah. There's like the the way they, they do storytelling is pretty great because it's, like, there's definitely like live sets involved. I just named a bunch of famous people who look amazing, and then you get to like uh, they do like cartoon or claymation. Like it's just different styles of animation that kind of give a little bit of storytelling. So far, again, I'm only in the first episode. <laughs> and I'm thrilled. I can't wait to watch the rest of it. That's I just wish awesome. I had more time. It's just dope. It's just dope. <laughs> dope. Uh, unfortunately, we go straight from what I feel is like a super exciting kind of uh, show to Apple TV's Ben Stiller project. Severance. All right. So Severance is actually about the company Lumen Industries that uses a severance medical procedure to separate the non-work memories of some of their employees from their work memories. Long story short, uh, it sounds like if you have had something traumatic happen or you just want to leave, not really even 
give a shit about your day job. You can go try to work for this company, Lumen Industries, and they will do a procedure that when you enter their premises, separates the mind you have outside of work from the mind you have inside of work. I like that premise. If I could just like flip a switch to where if I don't have to think about work when I'm not at work. Because like literally like that's my whole life. <laughs> You're like I just mentioned at the top of the show like, about right how now. Like, I, hate, right I, now. I hate my day job. Like even right now. Like I, I, even right now I'm thinking about work. Even right now I'm like in the middle of like work crap. The, da- the downside and, is uh, like they don't have any – correlation with the outside world and what i mean by correlation they don't have any understanding of uh where they're from what their parents look like they don't know if they've ever been late or not they can only assume they if they get into work and they look down at their arms and they got bruises they're just like i guess my outside person went like skiing or some shit but you tell me that you go to work for eight hours a day and all you got to think about is work like you don't got to worry about any of the shit going on at home or none of like that stuff. And then like you clock out, you walk out the building and then like you're your normal self. Uh, and then you don't got to think about anything that happens at work. I, like I maybe. That, how that shit works. If I can like, get if like a, work, if I can get a survey from my inner self, tomorrow. if I can get a survey from my inner self of like, are they torturing me? Like, uh, how happy yeah, am yeah, I yeah, down yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Like, but there's none of that. There's just like, I Hey, here's that an intro sense. video of your Audi being like, Hey, Shit sucks. Uh, you're welcome for not knowing what the fuck it's I like know. It's like 50 first Bye-bye. dates. <laughs> yeah. <it>. Yeah. <laughs> but so, like, the, the, of course, you've got Adam Scott, and I really enjoy his work. Uh, he's, he's basically the main character of this thing. Um, you've got Christopher Walken in it. You've got John Turturro, uh, Patricia I Speaking of John Turturro, we're going to talk about him later on in the show. Yes, <laughs> sir. Uh, yeah, Zach Cherry. Uh, Zach Cherry. If I remember quickly, this, this actor, he is the guy that was on Shang-Chi, the bus ride, where he's like, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film this dude. He's doing some karate moves. I took some... That's the guy who says, yo, Spider-Man, do a backflip. Yeah, do like, a backflip. He's back like the Stan Lee of all the Marvel movies where he just shows up and does random shit. Yeah, that's that guy. He's that's in the it. That's that Mike Mahaffey says that I look like. He's... Oh, shit. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. You're nothing like that guy. I don't like think it's guy. fucked up. You're nothing like that guy. I'm a big brown guy. I'm okay with that. No, nah, man. You're unique. You're on this show. He's on that show. They're different. Okay. Okay. But seriously, though, that guy's pretty funny. He's fucking great in this fucking show. So it's not, even, it's not even an insult I would take all. this in a heartbeat even if they were <laughs> really? doing fucked up shit to me while I was at work. Oh. Well, then I, I think I would you, would, you would love this show. I think you would love this show. It's four episodes yeah. in. Uh, I, Michelle, I'm going to watch it, and then I'm, we're going to get back on the show, and I'm be like, hey, dude. even more so now than ever. <laughs> I will absolutely take this deal. It's funny. Michelle's like, I can't watch that. You know, it's it's depressing. I'm like, yeah, not really though. Whatever. It's it's mystery and intrigue and you know, whatever. Like, hey, I I, I won't. I get the spoiler yeah, banners I, up, but I'm gonna put them down. You got I'll, me sold I'll, I'll, I'll the hesitate. Two shows that we talked about. Like, I'm <laughs> fucking in. Are you kidding me? Uh, this last show I have not seen is called Suspicion. And but I'm mean, I'm really excited to see it. I'll tell you why. Suspicion: five people, three men and two women. That, that's really the point. Have their lives turned upside down after being identified by London police as suspects in the kidnapping and subsequent disappearance of American media mogul Catherine Newman, who's played by Uma Thurman, when her son disappears, her. named Leonardo. Uh, my biggest nod here is even though I haven't seen it. I'm just going to name five shows, and Dom, you can tell me if you've seen these shows, you've heard of these shows, you're interested in these shows. Five in a row. Big Bang Theory. Like it. Krypton from Sci-Fi. Never watched it. Scorpion from CBS or World War Z. That's a movie. Was Scorpion the one about the, the, the guy that was on the spectrum that was really smart? Yes, sir. No EQ. Yep. Got him. Next, we've got... Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It was okay. What? You're dead to me. And then finally, last one, Merlin from BBC. Oh, the BBC one? Yes. I liked it. 
All right, so these five people they are under investigation, they're actually from those five shows. So the first guy, Kunal Nayar, he's actually Raj Kutherpali yeah, from, from Big Bang. Um, Natalie, uh, let's see, Georgina Campbell, who reminds me of uh, Tessa Thompson, she is actually Lita Zod in Krypton on sci-fi that I enjoyed. Uh, okay. LDS Gable, he's actually from Scorpion, a.k.a. the doctor who was trying to tell Brad Pitt. What's up, Brad Pitt, yet again in this, this episode? Got it. Yeah, and okay. He, boop, boop, I'm tracking. Shoots himself in the yeah. face. Uh, and then Elizabeth Henstridge, she's actually Gemma Simmons from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. And then finally... She looks just like... Uh, she talks just... Not looks. She talks just like Emma Watson. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then yeah. finally, Angel Colby. She actually uh, played Guinevere in Merlin. So a bunch okay. of big names, a bunch of big shows. So they've got some some acting chops. Obviously, Apple's not hiring, you know, schlubs or whatever. Um, and then Uma Thurman. Yeah. I mean... <clears throat> <laughs> Mike said the do a flip guy is awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> do, is a flip. <laughs> do a flip. Do a flip. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So good. Uh, but no, I'm, ex- I'm excited about this show. It's been around for a while. That sounds but really cool. That sounds de- right up my alley, too. I, I definitely think it's worth checking out for anybody who's into that kind of like, oop, get away from the cops, uh, mystery genre, and you know these Have you been watching like these perfect. like – these kind of dramas recently like defending jacob reminds me of did you watch this or i did um, not east town so, um, so that's definitely so those two in particular i think the reason i haven't is because of their affiliation with marvel when i see chris evans Kate i see Winslet. i see uh jeremy renner i'm like eh. uh what's yeah yeah jeremy renner Kate, is in what he's hawkeye no the mayor of east town not the mayor of something the mayor one is what Mayor of East Town is a uh, is a uh, uh, what's her face Kate Winslet. Oh yeah, saw that one. Yeah, the mayor, you're, you're like the like a horse, mayor. not like the mayor. Yeah, the mayor is the one with Jeremy yeah. Renner. The mayor, yeah, that's oh. by the same guy who did. Which one? I thought, was Which? it Dennis Villeneuve? Uh, the, yeah, the, the one Dennis with Kate Winslet was fantastic. She nailed that like Philadelphia that. accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, what's the name of that county over there? Oh, God, that's gonna bother me. God damn it! Yeah, she she didn't have the accent. That whole I, I joined in like two episodes in. Michelle's like, oh, yeah. I've been binging this show. It's so great. And it's like, okay, let's watch it. And I, all of a sudden, the last three episodes, I'm like, is it on? When does it come on? Saturday? Saturday? I don't yeah. care. Let's watch it. Awesome. Defending Jacob was interesting. It's very hard mm. to see Chris Evans in a role other than Captain America at this point. But I mean, I do and I did enjoy his like Knives Out appearance. Ashley and I played a game the other day before we get to the, before we finish this. We played a game the other day where it was like you name an actor and you name their best movie and their worst movie. <laughs> and for Chris Evans, I said his worst movie is not another teen movie or Fantastic Four 2, Rise of the Silver Surfer. Those would be my and choices. his best movie, I think his best movie is Knives Out. He was it's fucking incredible. so good. It's so good. I realized he like he's just – Yeah. He, he's basically <laughs> just being like – if he if he can go to a party, have a couple of beers, and then just be like, I'm gonna pick on that person tonight. But like right. every everybody <laughs> in the room. <laughs> awesome. Oh man, this episode's kind of like actually humming along. Great, we're about an hour in. We're about to get into our biggest topic here. But before we do that, bum, bum, bum. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Tough Raps. Again, go to toughwraps.com, put in that code joystick for 10% off your purchase. Please, 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 please. And then next, final round. Run the code. Do it. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so we want to do like first like minute or two, no spoilers, how how we thought about the movie. Yeah, I think go. that's great. I, w- I want to do I want to do first two minutes, how we felt about it, and then I want to do three things. Uh, I want to I want to follow the prestige uh, monta uh, line of things for so remember the movie prestige Christopher Nolan film not related to this Batman yeah. he he mentioned how the first part of any good trick you show something ordinary right and the second part of any good trick you show something are you slipping into Michael Caine right now because it sounds like you're kind of slipping into Michael Caine right now <laughs> for the second part of any trick you slip you show the audience something extraordinary and then. For the third part of a trick, the prestige, then you bring the extraordinary 
back. Yeah, so that's kind of how I felt about this movie. And the three, yeah, we'll get there. First two minutes, I enjoyed it. And what I enjoyed about it was it was a two things. Not a Bruce Wayne movie. This was a Batman you movie. You barely saw Bruce Wayne at all. And if he was, he had his like his his uh, eye makeup on, which thank you for keeping that in. They just didn't suddenly disappear. Yeah, thank God. Uh, number two, what I think it did really really well was emulate the feeling of a comic book. In the comics, Batman does things like narrate to himself. He talks about it. He helps talk the audience through it with those monologues. We get these kind of asides as as a reader. And we got that through the narration of the film. Those things that nod to uh, a comic, the slow buildup of story arcs. We got the main story arc that is what the point of the entire series is. We get these kind of one-off, questionable series that we get through one or two comics. Make it, And then all of a sudden, 12 issues later, we've got an entire story arc that we call XYZ. Right? Like That's what this movie was in three hours. And maybe it could have taken longer in a series or something like that, but for three hours, one movie, fuck yes, let's go. Yeah. Uh, this was, as a Batman film, probably the best Batman movie I've seen. Um, I think that a lot of what made the Nolan Batman trilogy great were its set pieces. Yes. Um, you know, your training montage with uh Ra's al Ghul on the um, pillars and all you know, that I yeah. thought I thought Bale was after watching Pattinson as year two Batman uh I thought Bale was a little old for that age of Batman well yeah yeah uh yeah so but um as a Batman movie uh this thing this this was this hit all the marks um the first being that Gotham is a shithole uh, and Gotham is always portrayed as a shithole, but yeah. you like, especially in the Nolan movies, not the first one, because the first one you still got that Gotham was a shithole, but in the Dark Knight and in the Dark Knight Rises, it looked very much like Chicago or Pittsburgh or, or anything like that. Where like there were very nice parts of 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 those movies. Mm. Uh, this Gotham in this movie looks like shit everywhere. Um, I got I got a very much Tim Burton vibe from even just the yeah. downtown, like all the different ads. It was big. It was bigger, double the size of like New York's Times Square, right? All right. of those signs. I, I felt like you could have been claustrophobic just standing in front of that entire building of just sign, 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 sign. Right. Sign, sign. I love that this is a detective movie. Like I say, from from that, oh, it's essentially if Batman did the movie Seven. Yes. Um, and Seven is my favorite movie of all time. Like, start to finish. I, I love that movie. Um, you know, David Fincher at his best. Um, I think that this movie does what I wanted the Joker to do better. Nice. Um, it was just enough Batman to make me happy that it was a Batman movie but also grounded enough that there are parts of it that make you feel uneasy because it's kind of like the world that we're living in. And when we get into spoilers, right. we'll talk a little bit about that. For sure. Because um, there's one set piece in particular that made Ashley feel very uneasy, and I completely agree with her. Um, but, yeah, as a, as a film, I loved it. Um, there are absolutely gripes that I have with the movie. Um, you know, uh, I think legitimate criticisms, um, and I think that you, you, you and I briefly spoke about it, and uh, Mike too. You know, the dialogue can get a little bit choppy and and for campy. Sure. Um, but I got but those performance-wise, Pattinson fucking killed it. Hell yeah! Um, as Batman, like, and you know. Ashley said, Ashley said he plays brooding so fucking well. <laughs> and like, he says like, he, she's like, I know how much he hates that he did the movies, twi the Twilight movies, but like those, those prepared him to be a brooding Bruce Wayne. But I know that sure. he could do both. And that's what's got me so fucking excited for this because I know that Pattinson can also be that rich, arrogant asshole. What was he, what was the movie he was in with, uh, Timothy Chalamet, where he was like the the Prince of France. 
And he just shows up and he's yeah. talking mad shit. Uh, the he's king. like, king. yeah, he's like, I'm just going to fucking yeah. kill you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he's definitely got that cock of the walk. Like I own this room, even when I'm surrounded by enemies. Fuck you in the face, right? And then you get this. To your point, you get this brooding. He said a lot without doing shit in a lot of this film, right? right. And that to me is what really, really carried it. Um, you ready to kind of jump into our three part? I love it. Let's digest. It. All right. Uh, so I, I will. Spoiler. All right. The banners are up. Let me give you the count of five, four, three, two, one. First things first. To me, the things that break this up is our fear or lack of fear or resolution of fear with the Riddler. Those are the three kind of phases for me. The first part, we're building a fear, right? The mayor is is at home. His family is out doing uh, Halloween things on Halloween night, which I love that. The minute was like Thursday, October 31st. I was like, it's Halloween. Oh, my God, it's Halloween. I got so amped up about it. And if my favorite was just like, you see uh, clearly a nice building. You see a, a family with a child. Uh, one, the child is dressed up like a like a ninja, basically. You know, like, is this the Wayne family? We're about to see them get that's what I'm saying. Get got, oh, you like, know, the the um the fake out right in the beginning, like that made me audibly roll my eyes yeah, when I like, saw a young kid and a, a, a mom and a dad. And I was like, fuck, if we're going to see the Waynes get killed right in the beginning of this movie again, yeah. like I'm literally going to lose my fucking mind because well, I'm, yeah. I've had enough of it. And, and to me, if you were going to do that, it wouldn't have been a ninja, right? It would have been Zorro. Like the kid would have been Zorro because that's what Batman, you know, originally was, was based off of. But like, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's the mayor, he's watching TV and he's basically just watching himself get bodied by his competition uh which was which was refreshing and i audibly was like oh shit when he yeah. moved out of frame and riddler standing behind him i was like oh oh that was great because again you're going into the batman not thinking horror movie and then all of a sudden right there's the murderer behind you you're like oh shit this is about to get real so that to me right right off the bat set the tone that this is not uh, you know, you you missed a freeze kind of movie. It was very much going to be a different film, right? Um, and that t- starts off the the opening of the trick. Really, is that he's scary. He's not fucking around. Here's this murder weapon that at first just looks like a, a hammer with right. a a weird end on it, um, mm-hmm. and very very angry kind of bludgeoning and, and beating. And off we go. I love the fact that it's an early Batman, and we get that kind of pretty pretty initially because of Gordon's timeline. So if Gordon was commissioner, which is something we don't know, okay, we roll into the movie. How, what year is it? How many right. years is Batman doing his thing? We get uh, Gordon kind of feels like he's got the room under control, and then all of a sudden here comes a, a bearded, hefty man being like, Gordon, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, I'm sorry, Commissioner. And like, thank you, Jeffrey Wright, for, for playing dominant and, and then Meek in the God same scene. Damn, I fucking love Jeffrey Wright. So good. So he's good. He's so goddamn good. And then we get so we get that from it. And it, it, it rolls from there. I think many of the things, again, and while I'm saying all this, I feel like in the that's just the first five or six minutes. You've seen most the of that most in the trailer. Of the trailers that you see is the first five or six minutes of the movie. Yeah. And then you, of course, see, um, you know, the uh, the monologue where, which I described earlier, where he's kind of setting up the fact that um, the, the the bat signal comes on. We got a we got a signal now, you know. It's not just a calling; it's a warning. And they think I'm in the darkness. I am the darkness because they're all villains are kind of looking in the in the dark, like shit. Is he right there? Is he about to get right. my ass? And then, of course, he just bodies all those bad guys at the very beginning of the movie. Um, I know you're going to know it, so I'm going to ask. The kid who's clearly, clearly trying to join the gang, he's trying to join the gang, ha- half made up. What is he from? I feel like he – so I didn't look him up. He looks like the guy who played Tim Drake in Titan. It, I and I thought it was him. I thought it was I him. I feel like it's him. And if it's not, 
they look exactly similar. Exactly alike. He looks just like the kid who plays Tim Drake in Titans, which is feel like it is so interesting. <laughs> yeah, of, of all of all choices, right? And just like, yeah. huh? is that the guy? Um, so of course, I, I my, my whole brain is broken because I'm seeing this dude. And I'm like, I just you're also that in the Batman whole, universe. What that whole opening scene had me fucking hooked. The monologue the way it was shot, the score, and then him walking out of the fucking shadows. The slow like, yeah, steps. The fact that they all heard it like like it was ambient. Like they couldn't they couldn't tell where it was coming from. And it's just like him slowly walking up. And that happens several times throughout the film of just like it's it's very tempered, very like it feel it feels it gives you the presence of there's confidence in that stride. At the same time, there's no fear. There's no anticipation of battle it's just like okay i'm gonna keep calm because they're gonna be erratic i don't need to be erratic on top of it right like that to me was was big and it's so silly that you can read into something so simple um but you've got a lot of other batman movies or other action movies that are very quick paced and there's a lot of hit and flash and, and and boom but this movie was so so damn long so damn long it was very long that you had time and to play with. And that's part of the reason why I said I think I would have benefited more if I watched this movie at home. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because it felt it did feel long at, at some points. I was like, fuck, this is a, like when we when you think it's kind of like the climax of the movie, you got like an hour left and I was like, that's what I'm saying. What? Like that's why that's why um, I I break it into those three pieces. Uh sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. I just it, it did feel long in the two thousand, but it's like, but as soon as it started feeling long for me, like they completely like brought me back. Like after after the Riddler is caught after he kills Carmine Falcone, mm. I was like, all right, that's. I mean, we got to be getting to the end of the movie, and then there's the whole shit at at Gotham Square Garden, but. When he's interrogating him, and the Riddler starts saying Bruce, and he just and stares like, straight ahead. Oh, fuck! He knows. He just stares straight that ahead. He's Bruce know. Wayne, and I was like, "That's insane! I can't like th- I didn't see that coming." And then, like five minutes later, we almost got them all. And he's just like, we "Missed Bruce Wayne," and I'm like, "Fuck!" And he then doesn't his, know he's Bruce and then Wayne. his eyes turn. <laughs> you're, you're like, "Ah." <laughs> like the whole audience just goes, <sighs> but really his eyes are doing all of that with just twitch, just a little twitch. Like oh, he up oh, get yeah, you're so close. If I had moved, I would have given myself away, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love. By the way, my, my favorite. So rewind it. So of course things kind of kick off. Uh, the Riddler starts murdering people. Um, we start getting these little. Uh, Follow follow the magic riddle storyline thing, which is which is awesome. Uh, I was happy enough that yeah. I caught some of the riddles right away. Others I was a little bit slow on, um, you know. So if I felt smart yet stupid, and I got then, like the first one, and that was it. What, justice. What right? is? It's like the dead lie. Yeah, we lie. They they lie still, right? They, oh yeah, I got that. Um, one. But like, what I like is that there's this okay the build up right the very beginning of the trick is the build up of fear, and then what I call what was I remembered it's called the turn. The turn is where you, the end of it of that turn is that we're no longer afraid of the Riddler because he's caught by the police right now. He's behind bars. Batman's got him right where you want, and that's when the press stage shows up, and all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, I thought you were smarter." that I gave you credit for. And you're like, what? And all of a sudden, you start to realize shit's yeah. about to go off again. We got a whole nother act. That was act. what I had Ashley sideways. Like, the whole scene of uh, them in Gotham Square yeah. Garden and them, like, loading guns up just top. And, like, bloating the seawall. Very yeah. reminiscent of what happened in Las Vegas. She was just like, she was like, that was super unnerving because, like, shit like that can happen. Yeah. And I'm like, I know. Like, I, I know. Like, it's very grounded in reality. What what irks me too is that you know the whole movie we're seeing these photos right we're seeing photos of people walking out uh, of the uh, what is it? it's gonna bother me 
44 Below is the secret bar, the other, the other chill lounge, whatever it's called, uh, yeah, where, the, where, the, yeah. where the penguin resides. Uh, but we're all seeing the same photos. We're seeing different people from the same exact angle. Fuck, I didn't even fucking realize that. Yeah, and that's what gets me after the fact. Son of a bitch. It's all the same angle. So every time you saw a picture of the mayor walking out, of the DA, if you saw the picture of uh, the, the commissioner, it's all the same angle. So it's clearly from Fuck. the same window. I had no idea. And nobody no fucking idea. thought to look nobody goddamn up. Look up. And he's like, bring him out into the light. It's the same window he shoots him from. Like, Son dude. Yeah, if, if, and that's when you go, like, where are these pictures coming from? Yeah, physically, where are they coming from? Nobody's going to, what? It just happens to be some sleuth who just loves his angle of the same front door? No. I mean, granted, you could yeah. say, oh, that might have been security footage ripped from a camera that's on the corner. Okay, fine. Right. But at least check it out, man. So I have a question. Fire it What is me. the one thing that fell flat for you? Iceberg Lounge. I got okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably be hated for the, my opinion on this. I think every scene that had Zoe Kravitz in it, where she wasn't trying to be romantic with Robert Pattinson, was great. I think their romance fell flat. Okay, that's my opinion. Okay, I say that because I'm a very passionate man, and no amount of leather. Would have kept me away from the cat's from Zoe Kravitz. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's already weird enough that we got the viewer, uh, voyeuristic kind of view of her apartment, right? And okay. now he's got like contacts and earpieces. Uh, that dude's trying to be inside her the entire movie. Yeah. A- and I, I was like, eh, oh, now I'm going to Bloodhaven. There's going to be no nothing. Nothing. Gonna go to Bloodhaven? You better follow her for a little bit. Like, hey, let's. uh, (laughs) You want to see my scars? Like, (laughs) let's go. (laughs) Like, come on, man. But um, the other, the other part of that, I think, is same thing. Is just the the pace of it. There's there's parts that were like they started to feel slow, and instead of getting bitchy about it personally, I started having to kind of tell myself like, this is a part of the comic where you go three or four pages, and there's three or four pages of panels that are showing you details. And if you miss the details, you're a fucker. Like, for instance, Thomas Elliot being the reporter, right? The reporter's name is not Thomas Elliot. It's not the Thomas? The reporter's name, I think, is like, it's like Gerald Elliot or something. But the Still. Lab, but it says Hush right after that. Yeah. So they're obviously setting up something with Hush. Right. Um, the other thing is that, the best Batman story of all time. It t- tell me about them <laughs> tattoos, bro. Um, and then, of course, I think what also fell flat for me, and I hate to be that guy, was uh, the Joker's appearance. I love the frazzled yeah, hair. I, you don't. I don't fucking need it. But like, the you no, don't need it. Like, the, no, the nose prosthetic was pointless. Um, I don't, love don't Derek Keoghan. I really do. Yeah. Um, I thought his appearance as Druig in Eternals was wonderful. Probably the highlight of that movie for me. Yeah. Um, I am with Mike. The, jo- I'm just jokered out. I agree. He didn't need but to be I'm there. Jokered out. Like he didn't need to be there. Um, Ash said if they keep him in Arkham for a movie or two, and it's not the next movie's the Joker, then I think that I would be ready for a Joker in movie three or maybe movie four. Um, I re- so Pattinson already said what he wants to do next mm-hmm. with this, and that's court. And I will fucking in this universe, I will lose my fucking mind if Court of Owls is a thing. I will first first off before I forget that Court of Owls reminds me immediately that the the bat signal on the chest is useful. In Court of Owls it was a light. It was like a flashlight. Yeah. In this it's the fucking battering. That's awesome. But Court of Owls is so fucking good. Uh it's again hitting that higher up of rich to do fuckers with too much money and too much yeah, time. Dude. And I think that that's yeah. like, that was a big prevalent thing in this movie. Um, the thing that hit me the hardest the most was how beautifully this movie was shot. Um, oh yeah. The, oh hell yeah. The kick in after, 
after he's done at the mayor's house for the first investigation and he's on his motorcycle back to uh the cave and mm-hmm. that nirvana cover comes on underneath the bridge um yeah i was like this is fucking cool again this is what i wanted joker to be it I, this is what i wanted joaquin phoenix's joker to be i think joaquin phoenix's joker movie is a great movie I think it is not a Joker movie. It is literally just a, this is what happens when a guy who is completely untreated with mental, you know, mental health issues fucking loses his mind and all of that. Like, no, I agree. like I said, there was enough Batman in this movie for it to still feel like a Batman movie. Um, Batman has some of the best rogues gallery in fucking comics. Like, do you, do you want to list off the ones they kind of trickled out on this one? We got Riddler, yeah, we got Joker. So, just two more. Riddler, right? Joker, Hush. Um, we saw and, it. Uh, we saw it for a little bit, I think. This is speculation. Who? When he's about to fucking basically die or pass out as Catwoman's about to die, the, he rips the that patch off. Is, yeah. And it's bright green. It's green. It's so bright, green. Yeah. bright glowing green. It's got to be Venom, dude. She was like, what did you, I was like, what do you think that was? She was like, I think it was adrenaline. I was like, it's a bright green. I think it's venom. <laughs> and then, especially yeah. his reaction, it's not just like, I'm up and uh, awake. I'm angry, pissed, and brutal. Like fucking going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, we also have Penguin. I mean, Penguin's yeah, in Penguin's it. We haven't in, talked in. about Penguin at all. Uh, I, I, I mean, fucking Colin Farrell is unrecognizable. Um, if I hadn't just watched Hot Ones with Colin Farrell, I would not have recognized that voice. Yeah. But it's still it's his it's his tone of voice. I mean, you know, any accent I do, I can tr- do a little bit. But I I always come out. Colin Farrell came out, but it was so good, man. It was to me. It was John the way was great too. the the mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, John Turtle. He's, he's good in every he's, fucking thing he does. He's the Jesus. Um, and the way like the way the mouth movement of the prosthetics. Like sometimes when you mm-hmm. see prosthetics, everything wrinkles in a weird way. You know, like that's yeah. clearly pulling on real skin to make a way for like a big piece of like silicone or foam. It was so natural looking. I mean, if nothing else, the scars were just aligned with the way his mouth would have creased naturally to make the scar look like the thing that was crinkling in the, in the, in the weird way. Um, and I love the fact that it was practical effects for jumping that car and the flames were real and all that kind of stuff. It was like a one-off shot. Mm-hmm. It looks so good. And then him just slowly, Walking over, same thing. Mahaffey called this out. He said the sound design of his walk is crazy. You can definitely hear it spurs. You heard it with the, yeah. that like subway fight. You heard it when he was in the church walking up to the mm-hmm. DA, and then you, I think you can definitely feel it at least in the music when he's walking up to the car. But when he slowly peers around the edge of the window, like I, I couldn't help but sitting there in the audience and be like. Are we looking at me? Hello? Yeah. It was lights out awesome. Just damn it. And the last thing I'll say about the movie, Batman gets his fucking ass kicked. Dude. A lot in this movie. Uh, Yeah. And Mike says it lowers the stakes because essentially he's unkillable in the movie. However, Batman gets the shit kicked out of him a lot. He gets shot a whole lot. He gets his ass the whole lot. He gets his like he gets his fucking ass kicked. I love the fact that like we have basically the same exact explosion twice, right? The first time we get it, Batman is literally right in front of the explosives as that dude's f- face gets blown off. And he yeah. wakes up and he's ready to fight the entire Gotham PD. Same explosion from Alfred though. Granted, he's behind a desk. Alfred's still out. Alfred's not yeah. not, not nothing to be fucked with. You know, he's got a cane, all right. That's fine. He, ha- he might not have his cufflinks in that moment, but still, and gets a little bit of a coma from it. Dude, I mean, to me, I, I know there's, like, debate whether or not Batman is a metahuman with a little bit more of a healing factor, blah, 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 blah. But in this movie, that doesn't count, right, until proven otherwise. Right. That's just just sheer determination and just general fuckery. I mean, 
Mahaffey called it out that he enjoyed uh, when he got to the top of Gotham PD and went to jump and was like, oh, shit. You know, like, oh, uh, uh, this is a lot higher. Yeah. Uh, and then had to, you know, quickly zip up that wingsuit up. Wing up and then takes the wingsuit down. I'm like, OK, this is where we get that quick, like, cool scene from the trailer. And we do. And then we get the scene not from the trailer where, where he you gets fucking <laughs> hit by a train and- Dude, I mean, he tries he's like he's clearly eyeballing that like truck yeah. to land on it he rips the parachute and instead the parachute catches on like a, a light he hits that truck hits the top of the overpass and just Fuck skips him. for about 30 yards <laughs> and he's like gets up like ah! <laughs> i audibly laughed out loud and i felt so goofy because nobody else did everybody else was like "Ooh," and i'm just like bah! <laughs> like oh my god yes yeah. <laughs> yeah this is definitely year two um and again this is so many multiple like small things we catch right uh year two meaning like um when because batman is clearly uh narrating over the film but he's also writing everything he's saying down and we see that because we he says his last sentence and we see him writing this last sentence in a journal and he closes the journal and it's the gotham project uh year two and if i recall when he goes to bloodhaven like uh, a couple of years ago, he, he called it the Bloodhaven Project, if I remember right. Uh, yeah. So like, it's definitely, again, so many nods to the comics, but also nods to like the films before like Shakespeare mm-hmm. still being a bust uh, in the Wayne Mansion, uh, that giant Shakespeare bust. Um, things like that that I think really caught and call it out. Obviously, Wayne Tower, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But dope, dope, dope. Dope. Go see it. Do it. The other fucking DC movies look <laughs> like that. Except for Black Adam. Black Adam looks fucking cool. Well, of course, you got but. Pierce Brosnan and a couple of people like that. That was the other trailer I got, the DC combos. I, I'm that DC, yeah, I saw that and I was like, man, I could give a fuck about Aquaman. <laughs> I could also mostly give a fuck about the Flash movie. Black I Adam saw like looks pretty cool. I saw a clip. They were like, how's that feel? How's that feel to be here supporting your stepdaughter? Jason Momoa, and he's like, "Yeah, it's weird for my kids. Their dad's Aquaman, their sister's Catwoman. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's got to be super bizarre, dude. <laughs> like, I love the fact. Okay, so like, Jason Momoa. I love Jason Momoa. Um, I love the fact. Not love the fact that him and uh, Lisa Bonet split, but like now they're back together working. Yeah, married. trying again. Trying. I was again. like, I need like we need that in the world. Hell yeah. Like we're in a fucking you know, in a pandemic." precipice of a global conflict um all you need is love man government is absolutely fucking terrible right now but like yeah that was kind of nice to hear that lisa bonet and jason momoa are working on their marriage hell yeah hell yeah um man i know it was like it's our usual time about an hour and a half episode hour and a half very small amount of things up front but damn you can't you can't just very quickly get to three hours of content. That's and we just so barely touched the surface, dude. We barely touched the surface. There's so much in there. I know. Go watch the movie. We didn't we, even talk about Andy Serkis. Go watch the movie. We didn't talk about Andy Serkis. We didn't talk about Penguin, really. We barely touched. Yeah. We just said John Turturro's in it. Uh, we didn't give anything away about his relationship with other characters in it. We didn't really talk about yeah. Catwoman. I mean, the, the movie's called The Batman. Maybe next week we'll talk about The Catwoman. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, God, if you if you got the time, according to this image i've got on my screen it's in theaters and then there's a hbo max release that would be cool this might just be a fan made look it up right now uh picture so hopefully that's not looking it up right now please don't hold me accountable for this image i've given photo credit to youtube i didn't say which channel uh but i highly doubt it was also released today that'd be crazy i'd be so pissed (laughs) actually went in the theater had to hear some people chirping for a little bit but uh april there you go. I knew it was like 45 days or something like that. It was like a, 45 days. Yeah. That's it. Um, so there you go. Mid April. Go check it out. Or go in theaters uh, in the middle of a matinee because ain't nobody there right now. Yep. But so good. Do one so of those. good. Uh, that wraps it up for this week, episode 33. Again, thanks to our sponsor, Tough Raps. Thank you, Dom, for, as always, for being here. Thank you, Chat, McLean, Chew, Mahaffey, uh, and that random guy, Ernest Hawkins, at the beginning of the show. Never heard of that guy. That dude's um, cool. Yeah, he, he that sounds... Guy fucks. <laughs> <laughs> this guy fucks. <laughs> Just like Mads Mikkelsen, this guy fucks. Um, but yeah, see you next time. As always, peace. Peace. <laughs> God, I gotta such... take my head off. Yes, sir. Such a good episode.